and we're gonna do it on this track. Uh, this is a technique of parallel, of compressing your drums really, really hard, but doing it in another channel. So you have your one dry channel that's like the normal drums, and then another channel that's like squashed to death, and you blend them together to make the whole drum kit sound bigger, where you get the benefit of compression to make all the background loud and make, you know, the, the whole kit, like you can hear every detail but you don't clip off the transients on the other copy. So the raw copy has that punch and snap and it feels like really crisp. And the blended copy is like kind of saturated, fuzzy, EQ'd a little differently. There's a bunch of stuff we can do and I got a cool rack to play with from David Cassetta who uploaded it and shared it with us in one rack. So I'm gonna make a parallel compression rack. I'm gonna show you one that you can download for free from in the group. This is all free stuff. And uh, we'll hear how it sounds. Um, yesterday I tried doing this as an analog example and the example worked, but I was only miking it with the, uh, the camera mic on the speakers. So I know the audio quality wasn't that great. Um, whatever, let me get this uh, monitor screen up so I can see your comments and you can tell me how is my vocal audio? How is your music bed? How's it sound? It always takes me a second because I want to see your chat comments. I say the same thing every time because I got to wait 30 seconds for this to pop up. And there it is. To expand. Come on, man. What are you doing? My monitor screen computer is like super slow. Oh, Facebook's giving me some crazy shit. I don't want that. Back button. This is a cool track, though, right? Give me a little hi, tell me where you are, where you're coming from. All right, Dan Pratt. So hey, Dan, um, how's the voice, how's the audio? It should be the same every time, but I do some different stuff in my studio each night or whatever, so I wanna make sure. You can hear me, I can hear you, and now we can go into live. So here's my session. There's a bunch of piano on there. There's a bunch of interesting effects too, but we're gonna turn off the effects for now because I want you to make, I wanna make sure you can hear what we're talking about. I made one bus over here with this uh, New York compression bus plugin. Ricardo from Portugal, cool. Hey, Andy May in Pittsburgh, hey, hey, hey. All right, so we're gonna play with this effect chain and let's define what we're working with. I wanna just do the beats. So there we have our kick drum sound. And this track of beats, it's got a bunch of stuff on there. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, you like that piano? Yeah, that's an old janky acoustic piano I recorded. So first of all, let me, let me bypass um, the compression and limiter on the drum bus. So now we got the drums with some EQ. This is an old 2016 session, and uh, the reason I started five minutes late is because I went to open this up, and I was remember I remembered this sound, and I was like, yeah, I want to work on this project. And I opened it up, and stupid media files are missing, so there's still a couple missing, but the ones I, I have the ones I want, and I know which ones are missing, and I don't want those. So in case you need a reminder, you should always collect and save your project. And I'm going to tell you this, even if you don't want to know, go up here, go to File Manager, open this up. Do manage project and make sure you collect and save your samples. So anytime you move that project folder, you don't lose really cool beats that are hard to replace or impossible to replace. So what is parallel compression? Well, I just bypassed the compression on this effects rack. And what we're gonna do is send the drums. We're gonna make another channel. So before I do the New York compression one, and I'm gonna take the audio from the Beats bus, which is right here. So now when I listen to that channel and go to external input, I just got a copy. It got twice as loud, which is exactly what we want because this copy we're gonna blend in and out and we're gonna put a couple of simple effects on here and squash the crap out of it. So let's do Blue compressor, EQ8, maybe even limiter. And we'll start with just the glue compressor. And I wanna make sure I'm only hearing this one. 
which is a little tricky with the routing right now. So let's put that on sends only. And the point of doing that is to make sure I'm only hearing the effects on this return channel. Josh Harper, Gabor Farkas, what's going on, my people? Thanks for hanging out with me today. We're doing a little parallel compression. I think I'll label my channel and make it a new color. How about weird pink? And we'll call it parallel drums. And in case you missed the beginning, the point of doing parallel compression is that so the original channel sounds as natural as possible, meaning not compressed, meaning the transients are snappy, they're sharp, it feels like the drums are hitting. And then the parallel one, we're gonna squash it down and bring up all the detail in the lower level volume of the sounds and really crank it down. So let's do a short attack time, long release time, high ratio. You know, I wanna actually use a different compressor because I want more options on the ratio. We can maybe do a little compressor comparison. Try not to say the word compressor, <laughs> say compressor. So first of all, maximum everything, short, re short attack, long release. Crank that down and do a bunch of makeup gain so we can really hear this compressed example. Get the ratio higher. And now let's slowly open up the attack. And as you, as you shorten the release, you can hear the compressor really, really pumping. It should sound like every drum hit is getting squashed. Or like Steve Albini said, overcompressed drums sound like they're exploding inside a beer can. All right, so I'm trying to make my drums sound like they're exploding inside a beer can. Patrick Vestman coming in from Sweden. What's going on, man? How's your, um, how's your new wave neon project going? I like the music you've been making last year. That was pretty impressive. Now, normally the drum sound that we're hearing right now, I would not enjoy this drum sound by itself. It's really compressed. If I open up the attack, it sounds a little less compressed and the shorter attack time makes it totally squashed, but that's the sound I want. Let's even make it more obvious like that. That's like getting absolutely crushed. Now by dialing in the release time, I can kind of control the, like the reverb on the kit. With a really short release, it's like amplifying, the makeup gain is amplifying all that background noise be behind each hit. And that's a little too much, so. That's a good hard compression. A ton of gain reduction going on. It does take a good amount of listening to dial in, kind of going carefully here. So let's leave it like this. And now I'm going to bring that down, put the dry drums or the original drums back in. Get ready. Pow. Come on. Okay. So here's our mix. Got the kick drum, the bass line, the original drums, and the second channel has the really compressed version. Let's blend it up and hear what we get. Why am I doing this on the mess? Not that far over. Just getting my push channels with the uh, sounds on the channels I want.
So that's without the parallel smashed. And you can play with the levels of the really compressed version and the dry version. And to make this even more obvious, let's go extreme over here. I'm just gonna set these to sends only again because I want to hear what I'm working on. Now let's hit our EQ. We'll do some simple EQing. I'm gonna take a high shelf and bring up the highs. So it's gonna be crispy and really obvious. Jay Sager, funky bass, thank you. Yeah, man, this is cool bass line. I'm excited to get this track out and finished in my Quarantine Beats project. And now I'm really jacking up this high shelf more than I would for a normal drum kit because I want to exaggerate it. I want to make it sound extra cool, kind of weird. And maybe I'll go down and do one band of boost down somewhere down low. So that's kind of like my kick drum position. It's more of like a little tap tap kind of a kick. It's not a real boom boom one. And we'll bring that back in. Compare it with our dry version. <clears throat> the whole idea is that you're blending two versions of drums, exaggerating one with extra compression, extra EQ. I heard it right there. Makes the kit sound, well, tell me how you hear it. Do you hear this? How does the kit sound with the parallel version in there? Let's go even farther. I'm in a maximum everything kind of mood today, so I'm gonna hit the wider plugin. I did not work with this track in the um, session view format to lay out my scenes since the day I made it back in whenever. So I guess I'll stick in the arrangement. <laughs> Keep going with those beats. So the parallel version now has the wider plugin on there. The original dry drums are right here. I hear that coming in and out. I hope you can hear the stereo width the high end comes up a little louder. And also by basically doubling the channel, the whole drum kit gets louder. Now I'm gonna do a little rhythmic thing that's gonna even exaggerate this more. We're gonna do it from the middle. And there are other ways you could do this routing. I could, I could go to a an aux bus, turn up the drum channel and put the parallel compression on a return. But um, I just chose to do it this way so that they would be right next to each other and I would save my aux returns for reverbs and delays. So let's play with a gate and see if I can exaggerate the, the rhythmic pulse of these drums. So now it's like doing that thing with the transient slicer where you're only hearing the, the, the first transients on the drums. So the compressor is smashing the crap out of it, leveling it all out so I can get each transient almost one by one. And now with the, the, the floor, there's total silence in between. And if I bring this up, it's like the gate is bypassed because when the gate kicks in, it doesn't reduce the volume. So now we can reduce the volume here 
and we get this rhythmic, choppy kind of sound that when we blend it back in, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let's kick that back in master version. Michael Ramsey, Rolf's here. Hey, Ian's here. Jeff Updike, what's going on? And then, of course, to really check your drums, you should hear the whole mix and see if you're getting, you know, are the drums coming through the way you want. And I could even like go way more with that. Up here you can hear it's too much, it's like too exaggerated. So let's bring it back down. And there you go, that's, that's my example of how um, I would do a parallel compression in my own track. If you came in later, what we're doing is we're taking the beats, making a new audio channel that's taking audio from the, the drum beats. So basically this sound is copied over to here on the parallel drums audio track. We completely smashed this drum beat with a compressor. I chose the original compressor, not the glue compressor because I wanted more options with attack time and ratio to play with. So that's why I used that compressor instead of glue where you've got fewer options. Glue is great, but I didn't want to use it in this example. Then I EQ'd it to bring up the brightness on the high end of the compressed drum beat and add a little bit of a bump over here around 180, kind of where the kick, kick drum part was popping through. And then a gate to chop out sections so it gets super rhythmic. John Vault says, seems like the overall result is more like a reverse of compression. The overly compressed track brings everything up a bit, but since you let the transients through, these are accentuated even more. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Um, the, the hyper compression was made, I did that to level out every single drum hit in that loop. So they were all kind of like right at the same peak. So that's like bringing up the volume of all the quiet parts. And then the gate functions kind of like an expander to chop out the empty space in between the, the beats. So you've got a combination of hyper compressed drums with little slices in between them. And together that makes the rhythmic action of the main kit feel like, like I have a really good control of being able to bring up how rhythmic it feels and make it feel like more bouncy, kind of. I don't know. Um, you can also add a little bit of saturation and distortion into your paralleled version so you get that fuzz and crunch and bite on there. And remember, this is something you could do not only with drums, but with like your whole instrumental bus. You could bust this into a compressor, squash it down really hard, and then side chain that with your kick drum so that the natural instruments come through like up in the main part of the front of the mix. And then the super squashed version is like underneath to just fill out, you know, like the middle part of this, of the texture. You gotta do this yourself and get a feel for it because the blending is something that takes, it's, I don't know, it's like putting salt in your soup or something. It's, it's how you feel about it. So now uh, let's play with this, um, what channel strip preset called New York Compression Bus, which David Cassetta shared to the group. There's a post in, uh, in the mixed texture group. It's pretty near the top. I guess I should probably pin that to the top. And it's a little ADG file that's free to download. You can grab it right now. And he's got the wet and dry channels inside the same, the wet and dry blend inside the same channel. So let's take audio from the beats. We'll set the beats again to sends only and make sure that I'm hearing this channel. And this is something that came from the, the world of analog recording. Like you always wanna make sure you monitor, you're listening to the actual thing you're putting the effects on. And you're not, you know, you don't want to like monitor before a tape deck and then find out the signal's getting distorted on the tape deck. Blah, blah, blah. So what do we got here? Dry and wet. If you haven't worked with effects chains before, um, an easy thing to do is mute the two layers so you can clearly see what you're working with. Here's our dry sound. And there's no audio effects on there, so that's just a straight pass through dry. How about on the wet channel? Aha, gluey glue, about five dB gain reduction, short attack time, short-ish release time and a four to one ratio. Let's just back that off and see what we get. Let's kind of exaggerate these and really hear what we're doing. So a long release time means the gain reduction is gonna stay 
It's going to stay quiet longer when the compressor hits. I'm going to turn up my headphones. <laughs> Short attack time means the front of each sound is going to get really smacked. I actually like the auto release section setting on glue. I use this almost all the time. Let's back it off again, refresh our ears. See how slow that takes to settle back in. Now let's dial it down. So that's some pretty good hard compression there. It's pulsing, it's getting squashed. You can hear that it's happening, but it's not, um, the sound is still coming through loud. It's not like reducing the overall volume. And we got a cool little EQ on here. Dipping out a huge chunk of the mid range. That's an interesting decision. Why would they do that? Let's find out. Okay, that's kind of the scratchy part of the snare drum, like the middle, the middle range. So in this example, there, this effects rack is gonna exaggerate the high end and the low end by cutting out the mids. You see what I'm saying? On my example, what did I do? I jacked up the highs, jacked up what I had for lows. You know, it's not a low boom and beat, but I jacked up the lows. So proportionally, you could say that this EQ curve has a dip in the middle because the highs and the lows are exaggerated compared to the middle. Same thing on this rack, but they did it in a more elegant kind of a way by cutting the middle <laughs> instead of taking the high and the low and jacking them all the way up like I did. So good example of EQing cut before you boost rather than boosting first. But you know, that's kind of like six of one, half dozen of another. Hey, play. And now what we can do is unmute the dry signal and see how they sound. And notice this, what's this over here? Oh, the volume of the wet signal is down at minus eight, which means there's already some blending happening. So I'm going to unmute the dry signal and then roll up the volume on the, the wet compressed and see, how, see what we get. back into the mix. How do I get knobs on those two volumes? I wish I could put my knobs on those right now, but I don't know where that is in my push. So tell me if you hear the difference with the wet coming out and in. Hugo, what's going on, man? I definitely hear the drums getting louder with the compressed signal coming back in. And you know what might be fun? Let's turn on the soft clipper and see if we can distort this a little bit. So I'm gonna take the wet signal, add gain until this soft clip light starts to hit. Really exaggerate that. And then blend that back in. Let me know if you hear that as this comes in and out when I mute and unmute the wet chain? Or how would you describe that? I could do this all day. <laughs> Yeah, it's coming right through, like, pow. 
You know what we need here is a good hard symbol crash to make this super obvious. So Dan said, gets punchier with the wet on. Uh, Hugo can hear it perfectly. Cool, I'm glad you can hear the difference. Um, in basic language, all we're doing is making the drums louder in the track so you hear them better, but we're doing it not by just copying the drums or not by just taking the drum channel and you know jacking it up to a billion. We're making a copy, modifying the copy, and doing a couple little things to pull out details that pop up better. So I, you could see I moved this low pass, uh, high pass filter and jacked up the low frequency on it by adding resonance to tune in on where the bottom end of that drum beat was. And as we were playing, I <laughs> added 12 dB of gain here, 20 dB of gain here on purpose, smashing it up into the soft clipper to get that fuzzy tone. Because as you know, distortion makes a sound cut through the mix better, kind of like like nukes everything else in its, its frequency range and brings the distorted sound up to the front of your ear. Let me, um, I wanna go back to camera land. I don't know why I feel like being on camera. Here I am in camera land, headphones down. So um, let me know if you have any questions about this. This is a really fun technique that you can do with your drum group. So you know, you, I'm always talking about bus groups, right? A drum bus group, an instrument bus group. Now you have a really cool tool to use with your bus groups. So you could take the, uh, the parallel compression and put it on a bus group with the device chains to make the wet dry thing. Or you could put it on an aux return and blend it in with a different fader. Or you could do it like I did with a new audio track and set the input to the uh, source of the bus group and do some parallel compression that way. We looked at compressor settings, EQ ideas of what to do with it. I played with that gate, which I think that was cool, making that choppy stuttery kind of sound to really like exaggerate the rhythm. Oh my gosh, Dan could even hear it on iPad speakers. Uh, victory for us. <laughs> uh, you know what, do you wanna see, um, I don't know if you know how to make device chains, if you wanted to set up your own parallel compression within a channel strip. So let me do that last. That'll be a really cool thing. This will be useful if you've never done it before. So we're gonna do parallel compression right here on the beats. And I already have an effects chain set up. So maybe I'll start from scratch. Let's do that, turn this one off. So what are we doing? We've got some drum beats happening. We're gonna drop in a compressor and EQ8 and let's put in a limiter like that. And now I'll mute the other stuff, get my beats going, get my volume back up. Okay. Minimal knee. I want that real compressed sound exploding inside a beer can. Oh, I know what we can do, I know what we can do, I can. I wanna get some crunch in here, right? Get some crunchy nuggets, bro. So instead of using the high pass filter from EQ8, like we had in this one, instead of doing it like this, what I'm gonna do is use my auto filter for the high pass function so that I can go here, hit up a vintage circuit model, jack up some drive, and get that crunch out. And because I don't wanna overdrive my output that much, Bring my compressor output down. Use the drive to get tone without totally blowing up my levels. A little bit of gain staging there, choosing where do you want your distortion to be coming from. And let's copy that really good idea of cutting out the mid-range instead of boosting the highs. EQ sweep technique, boost up, listen for a nasty part. Ugh. Do I want that 565 hertz in my beat? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Sounds like, uh, I don't know, I don't like it. Cut that out, okay, cut out the mid-range. Why not even widen that a little bit? And let's go crazy like Prince and still do some of this. Put a little air on the drums as they say. 
So there's my EQ curve, there's my auto filter. It's smacking into the limiter. We got our parallel compressor compressor going on. How do I make this into a device chain? How do I get how do I get this? Right? That's in my device chains button. That's officially called show hide chain list. The reason I'm learning these terms is I want to be get I want to get certified as an Ableton trainer and you have to know the exact word like show hide chain list. So how do you see your chain list? Well, before you can see the chain list, you have to make an effect rack. So you select every device in your effects chain right here. You can right click on it or you can use command G to make a group. That's step one. So here we have an audio effect group. It puts them all in this container. So you can turn on and off the whole thing from one place. You can open up that button to get macros and assign different controls for each parameter, which we might do. And here is the magic button for the chain list. Right now we have one chain, nothing. There's the chain. So to do this in parallel, and let's name this first. Yeah, smart. Call it smashy. <laughs> Drop audio effects here or right click, create chain. And there you go. Now this chain is going to be a completely fresh copy. Like everything coming into this channel from wherever it's coming from could be coming from an instrument or like we have, uh, you know, the stuff busing to it. This is a totally separate copy and it has no audio effects. So let's call this one dry. So, you know, and maybe we can even color code those. Oh, we can, ooh, dry will be green, smashies red. So when you click on the chain, you see the effects. You can even minimize them and get a good overview. So there's the smashed version has that on it. The dry version has nothing on it and you have your volume controls. So let's play, um, let's do it like this. Let's bring the dry value down like minus six dB so that the level's a little quieter and then we're gonna make up for the loss of level with this volume listening to it in the mix for the blend. Here we go. Oh, Dan says you have a kick on your beats bus. You have a separate kick going to your low bus or routing it twice. I am supposed to know the answer. Um, <laughs> Do I have a separate kick on the low bus? Yes, the kick drum is on the low bus by itself and the kick that we hear in the beats is coming from a drum loop. So that like one of these break loop channels has what we're hearing for the kick drum. Like right here. Ooh, and you can see there's some parallel compression going on right there. So yeah, I'm basically layering kick drums so I have a low subby bumpy one down here. And then the snappy, crunchy one coming through up here. And now we need to fade in our smashed layer. Turn my headphones up. Here we go. Oh, why don't I hear it, Steve? Because I didn't unmute it. Durr. <laughs> ah, you hear that? Right around minus 16 that just came in dry. The blend, it just snaps out at you. And you know what we can do to be fun? I want to play with some mono stereo stuff. So let's make sure we're looking at the smash channel. Drop that in. And what if we expand our stereo width a bunch? Let's go crazy with that. All right. There's only the dry sound. It's starting to sound like the dry channel is boring now, right? Whoa. Louder crisper, wider. That's working for me. This could even come down a little bit. Let me know if you hear that difference. Type in smashy <laughs> if you can hear it. Notice that when you when I mute the dry, 
It's sort of like the middle falls out. Yeah, that bass line's nasty, man. I'm digging that. Smashy! Where are we in this track? Now bring that beat back, man. Okay. So what did I just do right here? I dropped a delay in there to go for something a little bit rhythmic, right? Instead of doing the gate, chop out empty slices in between the drums, hits. I tuned in with the millisecond timing to make it feel like it's echoing right on the beat. Low feedback, so we only get one copy. I don't want, I don't want that. I just want like one little copy. And then a dry wet blend to bring up that little drum echo thing. And notice that I brought the delay in before the compressor. So anything the compressor is doing to raise gain, anywhere that we're adding gain after this stuff, we're gonna amplify that little pulsing rhythmic thing of the delay unit. Now I'm gonna filter the delays a little bit because I'm playing around. Rolf said no sound in the video now. I don't know what that means. Uh, Rolf, I got sound on my monitor. Um, I got it in my headphones, I got it in the monitor and I see the green VUs bouncing in Ableton. I'm not sure if that's on your end. Is anybody else losing sound? Sorry if that's happening, I don't know what's happening. I got sound so far. I don't think I cut the sound, right? No. So good. Let me know if anybody else lost sound. That's important. <laughs> so um, the last thing I did here was add this little delay plugin in front of the compression. Andy May said still has sound. Okay, thanks Andy. Good, good, good. To um, add a little more rhythmic texture in this delayed version, which also incidentally gives me the opportunity to use this during a buildup and go right here with the feedback like at the end of the song where we appear to be right now. For creative effect. Who wrote this song? Is that how it's gonna end? Oh wow. Some noise at the end of the piano. There's a squeak of the noise. <laughs> That's the squeak of the uh, sustain pedal on that acoustic piano. All right, this is fire. Hey, thanks everybody. Oh, Rob hit the wrong icon. Well, okay, I'm happy that music didn't cut out. Cool, man, so I'm gonna stop there. I don't wanna go on all day just like playing around with this session, but I think I'm gonna go on all day after I get off of uh, off this live thing. So we did some parallel processing. We did a couple of different ways of routing it with, um, you know, setting the input to come from your beats channel. So we'd have like a parallel blend with two volume knobs 
or we did the New York compression inside of one channel with making group effects. And then at the end, I created an effects rack right here. Remember, you have to take your plugins, group them using the group command, and then you have to go over to the little show hide channel, show hide chain, show hide chain list, show hide chain list. Open that up and you can add and drop stuff in there, which is a lot of fun. And you can also drop like reverbs and stuff and have them go in there. But I think that's enough for right now. And the last thing would be if I wanted to make a new bus in the returns, I could do all that compression stuff on a return channel and then have anything I wanted to go into that get smashed from choice of the bus on the bus routing. But I don't want to use my returns that way. As you can see, I've got a bunch of different delays and reverbs already on here. And I'd rather have my compression. In my head, it's kind of like a mix tool and I keep the effects for like creative tools. So that's the reason why I keep them separated. So it sounds like this. <laughs> oh, damn it. I wanted the beats to drop right there. <laughs> I'm being funny today. Do, 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 do. Let's go back here. Bam. Bam. All right, 41 minutes, cool. I'm trying to keep these down at 45 minutes or less than an hour. If you have any more questions, type them in right here. Uh, thank you, David Cassetta, for posting that ADG file. That's a preset. I think I'll pin that announcement, pin that post up to the top. And if you'd like me to export the chains that I'm using here, let me know. This is Live 10 I'm doing with, so it's gonna be for Live 10, but I'd be happy to um, export those, put them up in the group so you can download them and play with them on your own. How do you like that? Let me know what you want. Let me know what you think. If you have any more questions, type them in. And this is my favorite way to do it right now. I saw this post last night where a couple people were talking about parallel compression or New York compression, which came from New York studios in the 80s probably. I don't know. Uh, and I think it's so cool to be able to see people talking about something and then do it in a session and then hand out the preset for all, everybody to do it, to play with in the tracks you're working on. So in my mind, that's what we're all doing. You don't have to use this if you don't want to, but whatever, it's up to you. And uh, I think that's enough for now. All right, thanks for watching everybody. I'll catch you tomorrow. Beep.